Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafting with Slabby. I'm happy to bring you another Halloween video. This one I decided to do as a slim line card, which are hugely popular right now. I started off by prepping my panel, which I cut from the uh, Lawn Fawn Large Slimline Dies. It's the larger one of the two. That's the one that comes with the sliders. And I also cut out another slimline front, I guess you could say. It was the small slimline with the lift the flaps, also by Lawn Fawn. And when I stamped my clear embossing ink onto this background, I made sure that it lined up with the flaps. And then I went ahead and heat embossed it with the Ranger Black Super Fine Detail Embossing Powder so that it would come out nice with the writing and give it that lovely glossy finish. I then went in with a little bit of ink blending and pardon my cat meowing in the background she's being accosted by the dog who's very interested to sniff her okay so i used barn no i didn't i used fired brick and aged mahogany for this background and those are distressing colors if you're not familiar and you can also see them in the video and I went all over with the fired brick and then I went in around the edges with the aged mahogany because I kind of wanted to look bloody, I guess. I mean, it's a cute, whimsical, fun lawn fawn card, but it is also Halloween and um, it does have a punny vampire saying. So I wanted to make sure that I was kind of emulating that vampire lore, I guess you could say. And then when that was done, I went back in with the fired brick and um, just blended it all out. Now, for the flap part, I tried to go in first with the crackling campfire, which I have been obsessed with and is um, one of my favorite oranges. And I decided that it was a little bit too dark based on what I had picked out. And um, so I decided to go in with the carved pumpkin first. And I hadn't done a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. Like, I don't have a swatch made for Crackling Campfire, um, which is why you saw me kind of tapping it off on the mat so I could see what the color difference is between the two. All right. I think the cats and dogs have stopped fighting. We will monitor. All right. So I did go in heavy handed on both panels with these inks. I just really, really wanted them to be saturated, not blotchy, just because of the whimsical nature of the card that I was going for. And um, because of that, I also decided not to leave any splatters on the card because, again, I've got all these new crystal drops that are just phenomenal and I wanted to use those to embellish and I didn't want the background to kind of take away from that. So similar to what I did with the first panel, I did the carved pumpkin first and then I went around the edges with the crackling campfire. The focus with the crackling campfire though was also to um, kind of color the outside frame and a little bit of the flap. So you'll see me going in between the flaps there and making sure that I hit the bottom of the flap as well. And that's just to give it a little bit of dimension and also to highlight where those flaps are for the recipient of this card. And again, when that was all done, I went back in with the carved pumpkin and I just blended it out in the middle of the flaps there. All right, now when I finished that, I realized that you're gonna be able to see the back of my flaps. So I repeated the same process with the carved pumpkin and the crackling campfire on the back side of the card. And it didn't matter much that I had ink transfer on the back, but I did make sure to clean my waffle flower water media mat in between the two applications of color. And I actually didn't get as much ink on my mat um, 
when I was doing the back end because I wasn't really focusing on the edges. So I didn't need to go off the mat too much. I just wanted to match the front of the card. Okay, so when that was all done, I just took my bone folder and I scored the flaps so that they would open. And then I went on to the coloring. Um, whenever I do an ink blended background, I do like to do that first just to give it an opportunity to dry while I'm coloring my embellishments. So that's why you will see that process in my videos. And I'm going to step back and let you enjoy the um, coloring process i will also link all the colors that i use down below in the description enjoy
Okay, so when my coloring was all done, I went back in with my um, black ink, which is the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, um, and I put the ghosts' faces on. And the reason I didn't do that ahead of time is because I wasn't sure where I wanted them with the flaps, and depending on where the different costumes were, I wanted to um, match the costume to the face, if that makes sense. So for example, in this stamp set, which is the Booyah stamp set from Lawn Fawn, which is oh so cute if you haven't picked it up, you'll see that the vampire, for example, has vampire teeth, and then the cat has whiskers, and the little Frankenstein guy has got like that that stitching on his face so before I stamped those on the ghost faces I wanted to make sure that I knew which costume was going on which ghost and I didn't really decide that until after I had colored everything and I was getting ready to lay out the card so once I put the faces on I just went ahead and I applied all of the extra pieces and costumes to my little ghosts and again, where I placed the costumes and little accessories, for example, with the witch and um, the broom, it determined, it was determined by the placement of my ghosts on my card. So, you know, when you're designing these cards, don't feel bad when you have to take a step back and maybe do things out of order, like... Or screw up like I did where I didn't put the uh, eye patch on my pirate first. And um, then I had to rip off the hat really quick before the glue dried. That's totally fine. You know, it's supposed to be enjoyable and just be in the moment. I find that with card making, I have to be in the moment. Otherwise, I miss steps and stuff. And it's really good. It, it really centers me um, to what is going on right now. So I don't have to focus on what is going on in the world, for example, which can be a little bit crazy. So when, when that was all done, my panels had dried at that point. So I started ap applying my foam tape adhesive. And I kind of wanted the flaps to pop out so that I could have my little ghosts hang out in there and um, just to have that extra dimension in the shadows, I think, would look really super cute. So um, that's what I did. And then I started adding my little ghosts. Now, if I had, if I could do this again, and I mean, I will do another slimline card again with the flaps because they're just great. Um, I will actually wait to apply the foam tape until after I've added all my embellishments to the front. And I will tell you why. So once I put everybody inside, in their places, I guess, I then actually took a bunch of images from the stamp set, which was so cute um, and I just stamped them onto the finished panels because I I didn't want to add them ahead of time again because I wanted to see what the layout looked like where all my critters were how it worked with the flap being on top etc etc I just wanted to see it kind of on the finished card because those types of embellishments are the finishing off of the card for me and um, so I waited and here you see me applying a second layer of foam tape to these little guys that are going to be on the inside. And the reason for that is because with the lift the flaps, if I had only applied a single layer of foam tape, they would be at the same level as the lift the flaps. And I didn't want to risk the recipient of this card not being able to open their card. So I put a second layer of tape on there and it'll help pop it up a little bit more so it's obvious and easier to grab the, the flaps and open it up. So once that was done, I actually started adhering, or no, sorry, 
I stamped the images inside of the back panel. And I totally could have done all of this without having to have put foam tape on the flip the flap panel. And I'm just using that to kind of figure out where my little spider and its little web is going to go. And this is why I should have waited to put the foam adhesive on the flip the, the flap. Because then I started stamping all of these awesome um, bats. And I think this was from a different set. Possibly Happy Haunting. And you can see right there that that one didn't stamp the greatest, the bigger bat. I ended up having to actually open the flaps and stamp the bats that way. And then it worked out fine. Um, and I mean, it didn't bother me enough to have to restart or to figure out how to cover up that bat. So that's also fine. But if you're the kind of person who that would really bug, then I would say definitely wait to put the foam adhesive on the front panel until after you had finished the stamping portion of the embellishments. Now the other thing that I did too, for the center panel, obviously I don't have a ghost on the inside, um, but I have the two ghosts and they kind of look like they're holding hands, which is so adorable, on the front of the card. I did position them down a little bit farther past the flap on purpose so that they could kind of act like a handle to open up that flap because there's nothing in behind it to stop it from falling through. So I wanted to make sure that I had another mechanism on the front to make sure that that flap would open easily. And then I just went ahead and I applied all the rest of my little embellishments, my little Halloween candies and the trick-or-treat bags. And then I went in with the Nouveau Crystal Drops and I just added some embellishments here and there with those. Um, where the kitty cat is there on the left underneath the flap, I stamped that. Oh, and I did um, adhere this to a three by three, three and a half by eight and a half card base folded. That was the folded side size my apologies i can't talk today um and then so this is me going in with the embellishments and uh, the colors that i used for the nouveau crystal drops are below as well but for the kitty i don't know how well you can see it but those are actually hearts so i used the drops to basically color in the hearts and it just ended up looking so cute i loved it so i'm definitely gonna have to reuse that and then for the front i really wanted to tie in the bride of frankenstein to frankenstein's monster so you'll see that i am using coordinating um, drops back between the two of them all right so that is my card i'm really happy with how it turned out it was my first slimline card i hope you enjoyed today's video and if you liked it, please hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to get notified of new videos on my channel. And I will see you again in the next one. Thank you.